All right, here we go. We'll do a clacker. And we are going to pick up where we left off last session. Uh, this is a different recording for people that are watching, so real quick recap. Um, our party is missing their rogue. Thaddeus has gone missing. He went uh, swimming, discovered a shipwreck, and nobody knows what happened. The rest of the party, very lucky for them, our amazing death cleric, Lavinia, had a water-breathing spell. They all, uh, and it's a group water breathing spell. They all got water breathing. They went down to investigate, found the shipwreck, found a really, really, really big crab in the shipwreck that they decided not to challenge, found an entrance into a cavern behind the shipwreck, and they followed that passage now into a big open subterranean cavern that they are walking through, and they have found tracks both of Percy and other things. Uh, the last thing you guys found was a body. Body of what looks like a dismembered pirate. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, looking at the game map, you are standing there. Uh, the body of the dismembered pirate. I'm just going to bring up a token in this case, and I'll get you a mini for this. Let's find the mini. I have minis that we can use. I don't know if any of them are pirates. These are the awesome painted minis that we've gotten from uh, that uh, Missing Thaddeus has painted. So for now, we're just going to have. Nope, that's a guy in a blue suit. This guy with his scroll, who's a town crier. He's going to be a good dead pirate. Put him over there. Okay. I'll break off his arm and leg. No! Don't, <laughs> don't break minis. Bad. That's a real bad. <laughs> don't let the cat eat the minis. Yes, cat, don't come. Don't come to me. Okay, so. You are going to do some investigating. Is that right, Raven? You want to go check it out? I wanted to check his body to see if he had any clues or treasure. Okay. All right. You're going to go up and do that? I'm sure. Why not? Roll for investigation. i got nothing else to do under this cavern. I rolled a, a 6 plus um, 8 for perception is 14. All right. Uh, so as you turn over the body to search it, all of a sudden, uh, the head jerks up and goes, Wah! and he pulls a dagger out of his boot and shoves it right into your arm. Ooh, that's unfortunate. And you take six points of damage. That's very unfortunate. And everybody else rolls for initiative. Oh, I got to get your tokens on here. That's why I always put tokens on here. Raven. Percy. Thaddeus is not present. Okay, I'm just setting up uh, on the map. I'm going to uh, actually activate tokens for each of you, too, so I can pull up character sheets real easy. And also, I need to add you all to, an, to a, uh, an encounter anyways. So, uh, here we go. We're going to start initiatives with this undead... Uh, Pirate that you're, it says undead soldier, but he's a pirate. So I'm just going to roll these, and you guys can tell me. Don't forget to include your perception. What What do we got? Starting with Raven, going around. Uh, 15. Okay. And um, Josephine? 26. 26. Lavinia? 21. 21. 23. She's 23. So Josephine is the first to react. As soon as uh, Raven takes damage, immediately Josephine reacts. This mean undead pirate got him a cheap shot. Okay, so what he's, do you want he's, to do? he's stabbed in the arm. Did he... He's laying prone. He's laying prone, okay. He's only got one arm and one leg. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, Raven. Did Raven step away from him? 
he hasn't even had a chance to react. Okay. You're reacting before Raven even moved. Right now, Raven is staring at disbelief at a dagger that's sticking out of his arm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid pilot. I think you're going to have to move up. Or to one side. Now, I'll put the tokens wherever you guys are once we figure that out. Wow, the tokens are big compared to you. I know. Well, that's okay. We're just going to live with the fact that this time. Because I can't make the tokens any smaller because this map is so big. So I'm just going to line you up over here like this so I can just pick them. Okay. So, Josephine. Yeah, just give me one second here, okay? Um, now, uh, it's going to be Percy. You're after okay. Josephine. Then it's going to be the uh, undead pirate. And then it's going to be... I'm going to change this guy's name. Okay, I'm going to use, first of all, um, 10 paces. So roll initiative. Oh, I guess we already rolled initiative. Yeah. It says you react to trouble with lightning speed, positioning yourself just right. You gain a plus two circumstance bonus on your to your initiative roll, and you can interact to draw a one-handed firearm or one-handed crossbow. As your first action on your first turn, you can step up to 10 feet as a free action. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm doo -doo -doo. I'm pulling out my whip. Whoa. I'm smacking them. Roll the hit. You have to roll the hit with your whip. Sure you do. Right? Yes. It's a D8. Well, you roll a D20 to hit oh, him. Okay. To see if he's smacking. The whip itself, you, the bonus you get on the whip is actually plus nine, because it's a plus one besides the straight plus eight. So add nine to whatever roll, you roll. I rolled a 16. Well, if you roll a 16, you're fine. No. You'll hit him no problem. Damage is 3d4. 3d4. Slashing. Larry hasn't come back I prefer yet, lashing, right? not slashing. For a Did whip. Larry come back in? Or is he out? Well, it, all you need four? to do is look to see. Four plus... Four. Four, wow. Plus? One. So nine. Nine points of damage to the undead pirate. All right. I will fix that. Okay. Uh, as you uh, slash him with the whip, um, We haven't used the whip a lot, so I don't have a lot of rules for the whip yet. But you know what? It seems to me the whips should have... Um, there's a second kind of attack I'm going to try and add to your whip. And that is an attack to uh, bind. Mm. So that you can... Instead what, yeah. of uh, whipping your whip mm -hmm. to do a cutting slash, mm -hmm. you can actually give it a flick to try and wrap it two or three times around something and hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remind me about that in the future to okay. add that to your whip. Uh, that was an action, uh, and you have two actions left. Wasn't uh, moving... Oh, you're right. You moved, so you have action. one action. Okay, I'm going to try to whip him again. Whip it real good. What? Whip it real good. Yeah, real good. Right? So it looks like I probably missed him that time. I rolled a six. No way you're going to hit him with that. Roll yeah. six. So that's the end of your turn. It becomes Percy's turn. Okay. Lavinia, you uh, you are after the pirate. Who's up next? So I'm going to take my two quick shots with the black bow. Oh, you're going to fire with the black bow? Yeah, so two quick shots with the black bow. You get to fire twice because you got like a property on your uh, Yeah, it's so uh, it's a character, quick shot. Right? And it's a, uh, it's, yeah. What is it called again? Is it actually called that? What's it called? Uh, it is called... Is it Hunted Shot? I think it's Hunted Shot. Yep. Yeah. Hunted Shot. Two quick shots uh, against the one yeah. you hunt. Yep. Yeah. So he's your your prey then? Yes, he is. Uh, yeah. Hunters. Hunt Prey. Hunter's Edge. Hunted Shot. Yeah. You get a plus four with the bow to, to hit? Yep. So, uh, that one is... It doesn't make sense to me. What? I'm going to try and edit that so that it's more than plus four, because that's 
you know, a great bow and to only have that much bonus attack on it, I think it's stupid. I'm going to say yeah. it's a plus eight. Plus just four. like your tomahawk. Because you're trained with a bow just like you're trained with your tomahawk. So I'm going to say a plus eight. So it should be a 19. Hits. And uh, the damage on that one is... Damage is a D8 and a D4. Because you get uh, D4 shot of damage. Yeah, and it's it's a undead. So. And also plus one piercing on the arrow. Four, three, eight. Ah, that is. Can't see that. Uh, three whole points of damage. Boom. All right, and my second shot is nineteen plus ten, so or plus eight. So, so you hit him with the second shot. However, yep. you only did three points of damage with the first arrow. First arrow did three points with damage. a d8 and a d4. Yeah. You did three points. <laughs> it has only three points of damage. I, that's really sad. You get what plus one piercing? Does that make it four points of damage? You, uh, you, plus one piercing? Fine. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, four points of damage. And this time I got eight points of damage plus one, so nine. Oh, all right. And I still have two turns, so... um, And this pirate is now laying there with two big black smoking arrows out of his chest. He can't really go that far, can he? No. Uh, so I toss holy water at him. You're going to pull out toss holy water? They'll take two actions to pull it out and toss it. So that'll one, be the end. one to pull it out, one to throw yes. it? Yes. That'll be the end of all of your actions. Okay. You going to do that? Yeah, sure. I think you have holy water in your inventory, right? It's I, even on your actions we page? We have four of them I'm in my, yeah, it's in my inventory. I have holy water, it's right here even. Yes. Got to roll an attack to see if it hits him. Okay, 17 plus whatever the hell. Do that hits. Plus okay. You're fine. And holy water damage is... Well, that's what I'm looking at the thing on here, and it doesn't tell me what holy water damage is, but I'm just going to say... On minus is 1d6. Okay, one, that makes sense. 1d6. 1d6. Percy's is not Four. filled in the right way. Okay. Four points of damage? Yes. Nice. You did a lot of damage in that turn. And it becomes the pirate's turn. The pirate has now had a chance to react to this. i got to give him the last bit of damage. Damn, you really knocked the hell out of him. Good. Yeah. He struck my friend with his, his dagger. Stabbed him. I'll get back. Good. Uh, mm-hmm. He pulls back his dagger. The only person who's in range still is Raven. So he tries for an attack on Raven that's not a surprise attack. So, uh, oh, this says the action kind of oh, Let's see, I've got the wrong weapons here. We're just going to go instead with the dagger. We're going to go with a melee strike with the fist. So did he leave his dagger stuck in me? Yep. Oh. Stupid pirate. You got a free dagger. <laughs> That's right. You cast like major armor on yourself, didn't you? Yeah, you did. did. You just saved your own ass. Yeah. Yes. Your mage armor deflects the blow. Yay. Because it was a one point difference between hit or miss. Uh, so he goes for that, and your mage armor deflects the blow, and uh, he is, uh, because uh, he's laying prone and because... He's so severely wounded. There's nothing he can do other than this. Just this one hat in the ass. It becomes the end of his turn. And it becomes Lavinia's turn. Raven, you're after Lavinia. How far away am I from him? How far away are you from him? Uh, I would guess that you are standing 5, 10, 15, 20. I would say 25 feet away. Okay, perfect. I'm casting Disrupt Undead. And Ooh. Disrupt Undead has a dual thing but i can only target one creature and so i'd be targeting my pirate there and um heightening it by one is so the damage increases by 1d6 so it's 1d6 uh, it's a cantrip you can't heighten 
Okay. You know, it says height plus one You're right. down you below. You're good. Yeah. You're fine. Um, so it's that plus my spell casting ability modifier, which I cannot see in front of me. But anyway, so that's it's, your wisdom, whatever your wisdom is. So if you just go to your yeah. your very first character page, wisdom's three, so you get plus three. Okay, plus three. That's fine. Right, it says hey, roll damage 2d6 plus 3 vitality. So there you go. So you lance the target with energy. You deal 1d6 positive damage plus your spellcasting ability. The target must attempt a basic fortitude save. But in this case, it's roll damage is 2d6 plus 3 vitality. Right. Let's see if this thing can withstand the power of your disruption. And he rolls a whopping 14 plus fortitude. He's got 9 for fortitude, so that's a 23. So uh, he does not critically fail it. He is not enfeebled. Your spell fails this time. You know, what I think is also really cool is that this cantrip can be used as a healing spell. Can it? Yes, it can. Okay, well, this time it didn't work out. Because he withstood it with a really good uh, high roll. So this uh, is a positive energy? Oh, thing? you know what? Hold yeah. on, hold on. Maybe I made a mistake. I'm looking at Lavinia's fortitude, not the monster's fortitude. Monster's fortitude is 20. You do half damage, whatever the half damage is. Okay, so let's do some d6s here and see what happens. Three. And three. So. Six points of damage? Yeah. So. Yep. This undead is really disrupted right now. Okay. Um, and then it becomes Raven Alexis. No, uh, it's wrong. You have one more action because you stayed standing where you were so it took two actions to uh do the attack you have one more action so i can i cast it again no i can't nope one okay. action i'm good okay you're going to stay there it becomes raven's turn uh raven takes a step away because he's tired of being punched at and stabbed. <laughs> and he casts um, Telekinetic Projectile. Telekinetic Projectile. That is a cantrip. Yep. So I shall roll to hit. I rolled an 8 plus my... Um, my uh, sp Well, a plus 10 for that. So that's 18. You hit... All right, and it's heightened, so it's 2d6. Um, is it plus my spell casting ability? I'll have to read this very carefully. As a cantrip, I don't... I don't plus know, your spell maybe. casting was, ability. Yeah. So a plus three for you, or are you a four? I think I'm a four at this point. So you, you bump, yeah, I'm you 18. Wisdom, right? yeah. So I rolled um, three plus four is seven. All right, seven points of damage. It's hard to tell, considering that uh, this pirate is already dead, how unwell he is. Because he's already unwell before he starts. So, uh, I'm going to say that that is that. And it becomes Josephine's turn. But just before Josephine starts her turn, all of a sudden you hear a sound over to the left. And you see coming around a stone, another pirate, no, that guy's too big. I know there's a lot of zombie type figures. Here, put this guy, I'm mm -hmm. going to show you where to put 
We do have the awesome zombies. I just don't know where I put them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. I found them. They're cowboy zombies, but they'll do the job. Got to have the right zombie. <laughs> All right. You see where the token is? This big token right here. He starts walking. Did he lose an arm there? What fell off? What's on the table? Oh, it's just a flood. <laughs> he starts hobbling towards you, uh, and he is going to hobble 20 feet from that position towards you. Where did I just put my little pusher? 5, 10, 15, 20. He pulls out of his sash a musket. Points it at the closest person, which is Josephine. Pulls the trigger, and you hear it go click. Because apparently he is not yet aware that uh, he is dead and that his musket no longer works. Okay, and it becomes Josephine's turn. I don't have to use that because he has no ammo. Um, so again, I'm Mabel. Mabel, who are you shooting? The one who's like walking towards us. Okay, yeah. so you spin around and you actually take aim at the one that's coming after you now. I mean, because other than not standing too close to the one on the ground, he's really no threat. Like, what is he going to do? Crawl with his one arm and one leg? True. Nibble your legs. Just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound. What do you call a pirate with no arms and no legs laying in a hole in the ground? Bob. No, that's in the water. Oh. Uh, it's in a, a hole in the ground. It's filled. Uh, <laughs> so, what happened? I rolled 14. Plus your bonus or total uh, or straight dice for what is my bonus for... Um... Mabel is 10. Okay, then 24. So hits, obviously. Okay. And then... So 1d10 and 1d4. Yeah, the d4 is uh, the extra fire damage that is on a earthly weapon, a Terran weapon. Mm-hmm. Because of the bright steel thing. Because of the bright iron thing. Bright iron. Change the name to bright iron. Thing. Ten. Total ten points of damage. So you take a shot with Mabel, and you actually can see a little bit of light through the hole that you blow in this pirate's chip. And it stumbles back half a step and is like... Nice. And uh, that... Leaves you with uh, a couple of actions. What are you doing? You didn't even move before you did it, so... No. Um, I'm going to reload Mabel. So that takes an action to do that. Yeah. Because you're super fast at reloading. And... You're going to take a second shot? Or you're going to do something else? Yeah, let's take a second shot. With Mabel? Yeah. Roll the hit. God. And you miss. <laughs> Phew. I can tell. One. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Backfire. That means the game master is rolling to see what happens to Josephine. The backfire flashes up a burn that burns you for two points of damage. Ouch. And you are blinded oh, by it temporarily, and you're out for one round. Okay. Okay, and that means that it becomes Percy's turn. Uh, since I'm already got the black bow out, I'll do another double shot at the uh, prone dude. So, let's... Uh... Where is Larry? Okay. 16? 16, including your thing? Yeah. Misses. Uh, and Second shot. 
Second shot is 22. Hits. And that is 1d8 and 1d4. Oh, bugger. Mm. Ah. Oh. Eh. So that four that's points. The sounds of things not working out. For person. <laughs> four four I points. Would, I would say that Bo is not. Thing. The Bo is, is just not doing my thing for me. So. I'm not very happy. He takes it. a shot, but it's hard to hit a, you know, something that's prone on the ground only five feet away. <laughs> <laughs> so he misses both times. That can be a problem. No, I didn't miss. I, I hit the second time. Oh, that's right. He hit but the I only s- scored four points. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. So, points. yeah, yeah. So, four points damage. And, uh, to hell with it, I'm going to throw my tomahawk at the mother. Farser. So. The brother trucker? The mother trucker, yeah. The brother mother. trucker. That's yeah, my brother. Baby. No. Ice Fargan brother trucker. So, oh, that's not bad. So I got a 19, and uh, that's my second. So what is that? It's um, You're going to only get to be able to add five, but it hits because it's a 19. Okay, so 19 plus five? Yeah, so you're okay. okay. So I'm, I think I'm good. So tomahawk damage. And tomahawk damage, I think, is uh, D10. This is the first time he's thrown the tomahawk. Ooh. Right? Uh, yeah. Tomahawk. Uh, We've been playing for two years, and Percy finally figured out he can throw a tomahawk. You threw it once did you? Mm-hmm. Um, so it is. Plus six, plus As a matter six, of fact, he actually has more accuracy throwing than he does swinging it, according to this. Maybe that's the other way around. No, nope, thrown usage. He's got a plus 10 when he throws it, and he's only got a plus 8 when he uh, yes. swings it. Hmm. Strange. So, um, Damage. 1d6 plus 2 plus 1d4. Plus 1d4. Yeah. So 2 plus. And you get 2 points slashing on top of that, so that's 4. 4 plus. So 8. So Percy throws his tomahawk. Shoot, 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 shoot. And it hits the undead pirate right in the forehead. Splits his skull, and he goes, and he just falls back. Now, actually, truly inactive, and no longer with, no longer even undead. He's dead, dead. He's an unalive undead. He is an unalive. Yes, he's no longer able to do anything. My goddess of charisma is very happy. Hello there, cattle. You have to go away. We're busy. Really. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move up so I'm next to the corpse. That was my last move. Okay, moving up there so I can check him uh, for treasure or and, and it was going to be his turn, but he's dead. So that means it is now Lavinia's turn, then Raven's turn. So the one the guy over there. That one? Yes, that's stumbling towards you. Okay. I'm simply going to move up towards the group. Okay, that's one action. You need 5, 10, 15. Do you want to go further? No, that's that's fine. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm passing my turn right now. You're just going to stay there and wait? Mm-hmm. All right. I want him a little bit closer. Okay. Uh, you're done driving, uh, Glenn, if you want to give that off to him. Yeah, I can take over. Yeah. Okay. Here's the wand. Thanks, bro. I forgot to set a timer this time. Uh, I don't know how long the recording has been going, but I'm going to say it is um, we're going to play for 15 more minutes. And then we're going to uh, call it for tonight. Uh, that's going to be a little earlier than we usually do. I'm not going to do a third session, and that is because I've got uh, a sore throat from uh, this yep. last day or so. Yelling at people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just I don't want to push it this time. Next time we'll play longer. 
Okay, so uh, it becomes Raven's turn. What you gonna do? I will use um, telekinetic projectile again on the remaining pirate who's got a wet musket. So I'll roll to hit. I rolled a natural 20. Whoa, double damage. And it's um, 2d6 twice, plus my spell casting ability. So that's um, 8 plus uh, another 8. That's 16 plus 4. So it's 20. Nice. Hey, go to the adventure room for a second. Look at the pirate. Uh, if you can see him on the adventure scene, he's got a little green dot on the top of his uh, head. And I think he's got that green dot because he's the target right now. Does it show up on this screen too? Uh, there's some sort of marker that we see. Interesting. I don't know if it's a green dot. I don't know what that is, but anyways, sorry, I digress. How much damage did you do to him? A total of 20. What? Nice! Oh my god! Yeah! Wham! So you hit him with this, and he looks over, has his right arm, holding the musket, falls off at the elbow, plonk, onto the ground. He turns back, looks at you, and obviously uh, he's got plans. Okay, so that was two actions or three? Um, that was two actions. Yeah, you have one. I'll just step back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, need uh, a man, I'll go. Uh, out. As long as I'm 30 feet away, I'm happy. Run away, run away. How far are we away from this guy? Uh, looks like about 30 feet. 30 feet so across the, the water. water. Yeah, there's a stream in between us. Yeah. I wonder if the fishes are enjoying the show. Well, Josephine is the first one to notice as she looks down thinking about the fishes. I'm blind. But Okay, muzzle flash. Okay, so you don't look down, so you don't know. So I won't tell you. <laughs> thanks, well, thanks just, for So just, it's the undead pirate's it turn. It's the undead pirate's turn. And so the undead pirate, now stumbling towards you, especially towards Raven, who has hurt him so bad, goes 5, 10, and he waves into the middle of the stream. And as he wades into the middle of the stream, suddenly there's a massive foaming flurry of water as all of the fish suddenly I thought consume that. him, and within 30 seconds, right in front of your very eyes, there's nothing but bones laying in the stream where there used to be an undead pirate. Our pet piranhas. Okay. So, let's see. So, it's out a of good the water. thing that you guys didn't walk into the water anymore. That's a very good thing. And that is the end of that pirate. He is dead skin. Mm. We should go check his corpse. <laughs> I was going to check the corpse in front of me. You, you can go ahead and check well, the stream. I, I know there's a dagger on that corpse or not there on no, him there anymore. There's two of my arrows sticking out of him, so I go retrieve his anyway. Did that dagger leave any um, damage on him? Well, it didn't do any residual damage. It was just a regular dagger. As you look at the dagger... Uh, it is typical of a lot of the weapons that you found in this world. It has uh, made of some type of uh, very light golden yellow uh, uh, alloy. Um, and uh, someday you'll even learn the name of whatever that metal is that is used in this world for all of these things. But that's what it's made of. And it's just got a leather, leather bound hilt. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is all pure metal. Oratelkum was the red metal right. that the coins were made of. Okay. And tends to be a little bit softer metal. This is a much, much harder metal, mm. so it is more uh, a weapon grade metal. Mm. Uh, it's much lighter, though, when you hold it in your hand and compare it to one of your bright iron weapons. Okay. It's much lighter than uh, uh, what you would consider a regular steel weapon. Or it's a Luma Gold. And it's a very, very pale yellow. Okay, okay so uh, that means that you are 
you're out of combat. What do you want to do? Check the corpse. Check the corpse that's laying down? Mm. Yes. Okay, so checking the corpse that is laying down, uh, you do find a small coin pouch. Okay. And you open it up. There are uh, four air light slivers. An air light sliver, sliver, for the people at home, is, a gem is their regular uh, trade and is kind of the equivalent of a gold piece. A sliver, which is only part of a gem, is kind of the equivalent of a silver piece. So you find four air light slivers, and you find some coins too. The very RHL coins that we talked about before. In this case, it looks like there are about six of them in the pouch along with the sliver. Could you explain to the viewers at home what the bag of holding is that all of our stuff ends up going into? I think most people that play know what a bag of holding is. Uh, just about anybody who's ever played D&D or Pathfinder or any of these games know that it's a magic bag. That's got, it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. You have a whole bunch of stuff in it, and uh, it doesn't weigh any more than that. And uh, so, yes. The party has one magic bag. As a matter of fact, Percy has got a cool, real-life bag of holding. You should flick, flick it over yourself, Percy, and show them. Yeah. Okay, here's the Check bag. this out. Here is the bag of holding, and it is illustrated like a face because it represents a character who creates a pocket universe that you can store stuff in. Hey, so take you, my oh. head. Shut off my head so that they oh, can see yeah. it. Okay, give me a sack. Dave head. That's there we go. Turn off Dave's head. Hold it up a little bit. Show Ooh, the there we go. Look at this. Going this way. There Isn't we go. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Rob's real life satchel for the game. Yep. And he painted it like the actual illustration, the D and D illustration of a bag of holding. Yeah. So it's, pretty slick. It's Brilliant. meant to be a, a creature that creates its own little pocket of the universe that stores things. So. Cool, cool, cool. We even have a special hook for it. <laughs> That's right. There we go. Keep it up. Okay. So, uh, what did you guys decide to, you were wanting to do? We'll go around the table again. Besides finding the dagger, you don't find anything else but rotting clothes on this. Uh, what was corpse. the dagger like? Was it anything good? It looks like a quite a serviceable dagger. Uh, there is uh, a broken point on it, though. You might be able to resharpen it. But that looks like a, a close examination. It looks like it's lost just the very tip. Okay. Is it stuck in your arm? No, I pulled it out of my arm. I know, but the tip of the dagger is broken off. It has not. It's not a Morgul blade. You're saying oh, good. That was close. Are you guys painting misfortune? <laughs> what if the tip broke off and hurt <laughs> us more? Yeah, don't no, you're okay. <laughs> it was clearly broken before uh, before it ever came in contact with Rose. Um, I like to cast uh, detect magic. Okay. Did anyone right. put that booty in the um, bag of holding? Whose booty? The the booty that you got off the pirate. Yeah. yeah. The money. I oh, R. That's right. It is pirate booty. Yeah. It's pirate R. <laughs> As Raven Pirate's decides favorite that he's going to cast Detect Magic, which is a 30 foot, 30 foot, 30 yard radius. Yeah, I have radius. reach as well. For, you have reach? Yeah, for 60 total. You detect that there is something. Let me see where we are on that. You detect that there is something magical this direction. Uh, let me see if we can. Let me sh now that's the direction we're going, right? So, like, it, along this path, there is something magical this direction, and it is beyond these stones down here somewhere. It's not in sight yet. It's behind these three big stones that are here. This one, this one, and this one. It's behind those three big stones. Was that the direction that we're going? Like, is that the direction that the footprints are? Oh, yeah. Unless you want to walk in the water and see what happens then. Yeah. Yeah, we do the water. We do the water. Chills, really. No. So, 
Now that you know there's something magical there, that is the only thing that you sense in the whole area. And it's not very strong emanation either. If it's anything, it's one item. Okay, thanks. Where are you going, people? Uh, forward. Always forward. Move your minis as you wish to get to where you're going to go. Oop. Oh, a little earthquake. <laughs> uh, that's one thing that's there. a problem with that camera. I, I must have hit something. Oh, it's this little uh, black icon with a P on it. Okay. And please work, please work, please work. Otherwise, we're stuck. Well, if we're going to be stuck on a camera, that's the one to be stuck on. Do you want to get into the middle so you're not at the back and squishier? You guys are going to have to discuss amongst yourself. For a second, I have got to go fix this uh, camera switching program. I'll be right back. Sure. I mean, I only, I'm only hurt a little bit, so. Yeah, I still don't want you to be at the back where you could potentially be. More hurt? Picked off. I'm picked and, off. That's right. Thanks. As long as I don't trip in the water, I should be good. Yeah, that's a good plan. Avoid the ankle biters. <laughs> you don't happen to have a freeze water spell handy, do you? No. Because that'd be fun. It would. We could go skating. Or we could freeze piranha. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Well, we could. Piranha's on ice. Sounds like a, a bad Piranhas. Disney show. Piranhas aren't nice. Piranhas on ice. <laughs> okay. I will follow up the lead. Because... I'm not squishy. Okay, yeah. Pass this to Rob with your picks. Okay. Sorry about that, Buzz. Fumble fingers that I am. Okay, uh, let's go back to. Oh, excuse me. What's this? Oh, we'll need to uh, minimize the. Oh! Duh. There we go. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so you charge forward. Okay, and uh, we are at the rocks where the magic was emanating. So do we need to roll anything? Or? Where did you get to? You are at the rocks? You're at I'm going to rocks. move the map. Yes. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm moving around on the wrong TV. Let's move the one on the monitor. We're going to move the map. Oh, we're in the water. Now put yourselves back by those rocks. There you go. I gotta put it a little further up. Yeah, Dad, Thaddeus, back up by those rocks. That used to fix it. Yeah, it's at the very top. We still haven't found Thaddeus. I was just thinking, poor Thaddeus hasn't got Ghost to play at all today. He's just he observing. Has not. But Thaddeus knew that because Thaddeus and I talked about it earlier, so he's okay. I mean, I still sprung it on him as a surprise today, but that's all right. Um, Thaddeus and I are going to be doing our own gaming session Ooh. and recording it. Hmm. And uh, you don't know what happened. I'm not going to like post it. So. Very and, cool. Uh, yes. So what's happening behind the scenes? That we what's don't happening know? because you guys split the party. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. Here we go. Never so split the party. When you uh, get to that point, is another pirate. This one is standing there off to your right. You also see getting up from behind a rock. He wasn't visible before because he was laying prone. You hear him go, and he also gets up. He is this guy over here. But looking forward at this one, it is clearly the captain of the ship. He's wearing the big captain's hat and uh, the whole thing. 
So uh, he gets up and uh, he's uh, got two cutlasses, one in either hand. And he's standing there and he's uh, obviously challenging. So, um, roll for initiative again. <laughs> that did not sound like it was a good initiative from you guys over there. <laughs> was that bad, was it? Mm, well, it's three plus nine, so oh. twelve. So I'm kind of at the back. All right, I'm going to start these initiative rolls. Okay, so going around, starting with Raven, what would you get? 28. 28, that's pretty damn good. You're top of the pile right now. First one. <laughs> and 17. 17. Just has 17. Percy, I mean Lavinia. 12. 12. Bottom of the pile. Percy? 19. 19? Okay, good. Well, there's hardly anybody to move in the initiative. It becomes Raven's turn. He is the first to react upon seeing this big undead thingy stand up. I shall use a second level spell, summon animal, and I will summon my favorite Velociraptor. Yay! <laughs> and so the Velociraptor <laughs> has been summoned. Again. All right. Again. <laughs> Hold on. I kept Velociraptor. Handy. Out. Handy little lizard. There he is. The handy guy. There he is. Complete from our awesome dinosaur egg from the dollar store. One Velociraptor. <laughs> Go place him where you want him to be on the map. Is he... I can, I can cast 30 feet away, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Let's have a game map, guys. I'll go. cast him to be here. He's a drunk Velociraptor. He's having a hard time standing up, so he's going to lay down while he comes. Okay. Well, and he I didn't will, get there yet, did he? No, I'll command him to to attack. But a Velociraptor gets a special bonus if he's 10 feet, if he makes a, a lunge 10 feet away. Whoa. i got to find out what that is. Leave it to our wizard to know every single rule in the book. Okay, so i got to find out which creature he does. So he's got... Um, I have to go find that token for your Velociraptor. Leaping charge. Strides up to 10 feet, ignoring difficult terrain as it leaps over obstacles. When it makes a strike with its talons, gain a plus one circumstance bonus to its attack roll. But I will also use a, um, a uh, arcane focus spell called Summon Animal, or uh, Augment Summoning, which gives him a plus one status bonus to all checks as well. So he gets a plus two uh, in this particular case and plus one thereafter. You can do all this in your big one turn. Well, your big three actions. Yeah. Okay. I can, actually. I believe it. I have given you a Velociraptor token as well. Okay. So he will... He leaps or lunges or jumps? He does. And he's going to use his Talon attack. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'll roll for attack. And it's um, 6 plus 8 is 14, plus another 2 is 16. And that misses. Oh. All that buildup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, uh, next up, uh, let me look at our encounter list. That was Raven. It is the undead captain's turn now, and he uh, immediately responds to this big velociraptor that is in his way. Oh my god, has he got a lot of shit that he can do this guy? Oh great. Wow. I should have looked at what he can do ahead of time. Do, 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 do. No spells though. No spells. Okay. I had to double check that. Well, I'd rather use beating on my summoned animal than our, our fearless crew here. So he swings both of his cutlasses at once at this Velociraptor. Rolls to hit. I have an AC of 16 for my Velociraptor. 
This is a little bit wonky because it says that he's got a strike of plus 23. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Seems high. I'm just going to give him a straight 10. But he rolled a 19, so it doesn't matter. He got you no matter what. You got to roll for the second cutlass attack. Cutlass 1, cutlass 2. Cutlass 2 is 11 plus 10 is 21. Hits you both times, I think. Uh, Hits your velocity. He has a hit points of 20. So my Velociraptor okay. is toast. Uh, 2d6 plus 8 slashing. Let's see. Maybe he'll survive. That's a 6. That's a 3. 9. Plus 8, did I say? 9 plus 8. So he just barely survived with a 17. Okay, so three, three, points three hit points left. Because this is a captain. And he's tough. Uh, you know what, guys? I think before you guys fight him, we're going to uh, call the game right here. For tonight. All right? We know now we've got the encounter, and the, the order for the encounter is going to be Percy, Josephine, Lavinia. After this. But uh, I'm going to stop it here. My throat's getting pretty sore with whatever's going on. I think I might be catching colds. Thank you very much for playing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Um, any questions uh, about stuff before we stop the uh, stream for tonight? It was a court? really good game. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. That's awesome. Oh, the piranhas. That's a good touch. The piranhas? Mm -hmm. Didn't expect it. Didn't expect it. No? Yeah. You never did get to talk to the fish and figure out what they, they wanted, but obviously we know what they wanted. They want food. Yes. Yeah, they want to eat we everything. were food. They would have replied to you, come here. Come here. Come here. I'm hungry. Eat me. I want to eat you. <laughs> that's what that's... All the little thoughts you would have gotten. Just a swarm of little fish thoughts. That that's what Fishy all thoughts. Find. Come closer. Come closer. That's right. I'd like to see you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, what we'll do is go ahead and uh, the way the process is, we will uh, we'll all wave bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. That's right. <laughs>